Hey, thanks for uh, thanks for joining. How are you? No problem. I'm good. How are you? I'm I'm good. So, ooh, you wanna you wanna, for those in the audience who don't know, you wanna tell a little bit about yourself. Yes, my name is Lil Lunchbox Washington. I am. I live in Sweden with my ex, soon to be ex husband, hopefully. And I am dedicated to ending clown oppression. And right now I am working towards Clepe. You may know him, but Clepe and his clown form into a symbol of diversity and acceptance. Gotcha. So you're you're trying to take the the Pepe clown meme and own it, right? Yes, essentially. Not you know it, but I feel like he should be. You know, anyone can can use him, but I'm trying to change the image from being so negative. Okay, so. What's the negative connotation that you see with the the clown Pepe? Is it because of um, um, like what people say about the right or what? Or assuming that it's part of the right and whatnot when it, it started off as a harmless mean and meme and then it got made into something more because of the way the left and others took the, the bait. Well, see, that's the thing. People always say like, oh, you know, you just, they're taking the bait. It's not really a racist thing. But I mean, people are always associating this frog with, you know, the alt-right and everything. And maybe it's a little blown out of proportion. I don't think that it's inherently racist. Like there are people who think that, that if you use that in that frog, that you're racist. I don't think that, but I mean, I do feel like a lot of people like to put Clepe in a lot of racist situations. And I guess that's what I'm talking about specifically. I don't care who uses Clepe, you know, I don't care about their politics, but I care about him being used in a negative way because I feel like it just perpetuates negative clown stereotypes that already exist. Okay, so... What what are the negative stereotypes about clowns? Because I mean, well, the, I mean, I could go all night, but I mean, give, instance, give, give us a few. Give us a few of right, the negative okay. stereotypes of clowns. So they are always associated with. Um, wait, am, should I? Am I intentionally not on video, or is just just my camera not working? I think you turned it off you can I'm, you can definitely be on video i think you just have it off right like i'm pressing the button and it's just it's ignoring me like it's the button has like a slash through it and then when i click it the slash just comes back That's yeah weird because it's it's, weird. it's set for video call you want to try try it again now um yeah it's not yeah i don't know yeah, this is. And my a, camera is is on, like it's. Were you working. running? I don't were know. you running OBS earlier? I'm sorry. Do you use OBS? Um, no. Wait, hold on. Let me try again. There we go. Oh. There we go. Yeah. So if you, uh, my my camera won't show up to you because. Uh, I'm running OBS and I'm using it to run my camera, so it, it right. has priority over it. I have no idea why it didn't work. It just I pressed it a few times and then it came on. But gotcha. There but anyway, we go. that that works better. So it looks like I'm not just interviewing a talking uh, picture. Right. Uh. Hello. <laughs> um, but yes, what what I feel are negative stereotypes are, for instance, like. When most people think of clowns, they think of something scary, like it, for example, a killer clown eats children. They think of pedophiles like John Wayne Gacy, or they just think that you were crazy because the image makes people think of someone crazy. I don't know. But the main two that I focus on is that everyone brings up John Wayne Gacy. 
and everyone brings up it. And I'm just like, not all clowns are bad. So many people are afraid of clowns. People have told me, I used to be afraid of clowns. And then when I started watching your videos, I realized they weren't so bad. So I do feel like I'm making progress. Gotcha. So, so it's not, it's not like any kind of like, bringing down of clowns or you know the whole tears of a clown situation it's more like the negative people who've used clowns and and you know the connotations that kids get scared by clowns but i mean some people just have fears how are you gonna how are you gonna get away from people who just find them scary well i mean i feel like part of it is like when it comes to phobias, for example, which are more intense, obviously, than just a normal fear, it's actually not that hard to get rid of a phobia if you, you know, you do it in the right way. But of course, that requires a doctor, a professional. But I feel like if it's not even a phobia, it's just a fear. I feel like a lot of that can just be based in, you know, their experiences. I had a clown jump out of a bush on Halloween once when I was a child, and it terrified me. And I really didn't like clowns for a while, but then I was like, that was just one incident that doesn't represent them as a whole. So I just want to change the negative outlook. Gotcha. So a lot of people I, I, I think it's an act, right? It's been said. Some mm. people think it's not real. And I played a clip yesterday from a very big YouTuber by the name of Mr. Medicare. Uh, he mm -hmm. covered he covered you on his stream to like 10 13,000 people right and the yes, James, I heard about that. yeah and the James Wood publicity and whatnot um now Mersh and Revenge of the Sis over there um night the nightwave radio interview you had they they were they they looked into things and thought it was a joke why are you saying it's it's serious and, and it's not a bit? I understand if you're willing to to cut your hair for the role and and the part, it, it could be more on the serious part of it. But how 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 are you dealing with the people who are saying that it's not real? Uh, well, first of all, I'm very used to that. People are always saying, I can't tell if this is real, I can't tell if it's fake. And like, I always say, I don't necessarily blame people because I get that it's hard for me to, to get it like from a personal experience. Cause like, I know myself obviously. And, and I've always just been like a weird, crazy person. Like my, my parents, when I decided to do this, they weren't surprised when they tell people our family members, they're just like, Oh, makes sense. Like I've just always been someone who I feel like this is what I want to do. I'm going to do it. And yeah, I mean, I just, I've always loved the clown aesthetic and I embraced it. And I understand, like I said, that people might think it's fake or whatever, but I don't know what else to say except that it's not. And I don't know what digging they did. Someone said that I, I trolled relationship forums. I mean, everyone knows, like all the Lunchables, everybody, that I am fond of a coffee pasta. I have a sense of humor. I've posted that type of stuff before. Um, like I posted something where it was like, I'm Bria's mother and blah, blah, blah. It was just a coffee pasta and people thought it was my actual mom. And I was like, it was a joke. Like none of it made sense. Like my mom lives in America. She can't take my internet, you know? So I, I do like to play like pranks on people, but I wouldn't, I don't think I could do something this consistently and like pull it off because I've never been able to stick to anything like in my entire life. But well, the reason why a lot of people ask the question and it's because of Reddit posts that, you know, and Facebook posts and statements of, um, I'll actually, I'll pull it up on the screen for the audience and I'll even send it over to you because Mersh, yeah, okay. Mersh and them sent it over to me because they were like, I was, I asked him, I'm like, what's the, what's the stuff that you guys found that makes you think it's not real? So I can actually ask the question and show it to the audience. Um, right. I have a picture up and it says, which background should I use for my Tinder? Yes. That's my husband in the background. Yes. I'm cucking him and he doesn't know it. Just to get that out of the way. Now, tongue or no tongue. So if if you're playing the trolling game on these kind of situations, 
that's where the question comes in of whether or not this is real. You can understand people's well, thoughts, right? I yeah, but I wasn't trolling. The 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 cucking thing wasn't a troll. No, and people. I was going through a time where I was really trying to find myself. I started wearing wigs was after I shaved my head. And like, I would post in these groups where everyone was like, oh, you know, we, we enjoy shit posting and those types of things. And I would embellish a little bit, but like, I really did do that. I really did post it on Tumblr. Now, does my husband, uh, I mean, uh, Tinder, does he really care, you know, if I see other people? I mean, technically not, and uh, you know, how our relationship was, but I mean, he's not fond of me, you know, humiliating him on the internet or making him look like a cuck, but like we were having problems and I just, I felt neglected. And sometimes it's hard for me to just be like, that's why I'm not, I don't think I'd be that good at trolling long-term because as soon as people are saying things that I feel like, I don't, you know, I, I'm, I look bad or something, it's hard for me to play along. So like at that instance, I was just like, you know, people are calling me a thought and they're saying these terrible things about me. Like I should just, you know, if they think it's a joke, they can go ahead and think it's a joke because it, it was kind of embarrassing. But like, yeah, I mean, for me, it was a little bit like embellished, but like I did do that and we were having problems. So it wasn't entirely like bullshit. Okay. So in, in another image that they came across, uh, it was a post to Reddit, which you've stated is your Reddit and, you know, everything like that. Um, there is a post where it says, I'm the girl in the pictures. And I posted this in a group where anyone with a brain knew I was joking, laughing my ass off. My husband is in on it. I've done something similar in the past, and it amazes me that people in the group keep falling for my antics. Last week, I said I was a devout Christian. And it made a video of me crying about how everyone is a degenerate and suddenly I'm a thought posting about committing adultery and these idiots buy it. I change personas pretty often and somehow they don't catch on. Haha. <laughs> but it is a pretty big group. So I'll give OP the benefit of the doubt and assume he didn't see any of that. So your own words are challenging your statement right there. So was this because you were tired of being called a troll or are your words that were written by you the truth? I mean, I, again, I feel like there, it was a little bit of, of truth and a little bit of bullshit because I just feel like some of it was a little bit embellished, but at that time I was going through some shit. And I feel like I was having a hard time just owning up to that and being like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm having a hard time. I really did. It wasn't as extreme, the whole religion thing, but like, I did have a brief period where I was like, you know, I, I feel like I've kind of found God. Like, I feel like I do want to look into this a little bit. And like, I would just kind of make it a joke because it was easier to deal with because like, I've never been a religious person and yeah, I don't know. I just feel like there's always a stereotype of like, oh, all women have BPD. And like, I was just really, people would accuse me of having that basically when I would like change a persona or act a little different. They were like, oh, she so has borderline personality disorder. That, you know, and I was so like disgusted by that. I don't know. Like I just had this horrible association with that. I was like, I don't want to be associated with that. You know, so it's easier to just be like, everyone said I'm a troll. They're like, she's a troll. She's just a master troll. And I was just like, isn't it better if they think that I'm, this is all a big joke, you know? Like, I mean, like, again, it wasn't a hundred percent, you know, I would embellish, like, it maybe become a character a little bit with the religion because it was so far from like what I could comprehend. And I do think that I have had a tendency to do that, to get too sucked into if I want to just play a little joke or something. And, and the clown thing, I mean, I really was just embracing this aesthetic that I was like, always in love with and maybe it was easier to slip into that when i thought that people thought that i was full of shit a little bit so maybe it did start off a little bit as kind of like oh i'm just kind of kidding here and there but like i'm a really sensitive person and i think i just got sucked in i got sucked into the mean things that people were saying about me and i felt bad about myself and i was just like it is kind of easy if I just let them think that it's all a big fucking joke. It's like this long con and I'm not having these problems and I'm not, 
you know, humiliating myself. And then eventually I was like, fuck it, I don't care. Like, I'm going to be who I want to be. Like, I'm not ashamed. So I understand why people think that it's bullshit, especially if you read that. Like, that's completely understandable. But yeah, because I you gotta, really truly am lunchbox. Well, because you got you got to see if you're 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 putting up a, a trolling post that says I'm cucking my husband, and then it comes out that Robin's in on it. And um, I don't I don't know if he's ever openly admitted to it. Um, I would have to have and dive some more, but. That, that would be counter to what you're saying, you know? So that's why it's hard for people to buy into it when they come across things like this, where it's like, maybe you were joking about the Christianity thing, but then that, that statement of, I was making the jokes about being a devout Christian and, you know, shouting at everyone that they're degenerate is use, using that as an example to why the, the, the cuck post was a joke. So outside of the Christianity thing, how real was the cuck thing? Because it, it, it's hard to believe that th you don't troll these boards and mess. And I'm, dude, believe me, I like me a good troll. And I like fucking with people. So if, if you are pulling off the master of all trolls right now, congratulations. You don't have to tell me, but people are going to have that misconception, you feel? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's understandable. And, like, and part of me feels like, I mean, it would be kind of better in some way if it was a troll because i think people would be less like wow this person is disgusting and crazy and insane and more like oh that's kind of cool but like it's honestly just not but i understand why people think that i don't think it's unfair to to think that and also i i was never really on reddit i think people just posted those things there and then it became this big thing and i think i just i read the comments that people were leaving me and i guess it just made me like feel bad i mean i can't deny that i'm a very sensitive person and like i read a lot of the things they said and like i know i don't you know they don't know me and, and it doesn't matter but i would just feel so sometimes like i want to prove them wrong like i want to make them feel stupid you know but like again the cuck thing happened like that was real but again i would like i knew that okay if i say it like i knew that people were going to get give me attention for that particular post like i knew that people were going to be upset about it but i was also having issues with robin so i feel like there was just like some truth mostly truth to that and then there was like a little bit embellishment here and there of like i'm gonna like you know pose like this right in front of him and take a photo of it in this moment obviously because i wanted to upload it okay so you said you don't really hit the the reddit too much um but your account is extremely active. I mean, that's where... I mean, I talk sometimes about certain topics, but I mean, like, I'm not really, like, perusing... You know, I read things, I, I respond to people, I, I like to do that thing where people draw you poorly, and, and I've been in communication, like, you know, in that way, but I mean, like, I'm not, like... Like, someone said I was trolling relationship forums. I was like, I don't... I've never done that. <laughs> Well, I think they think you're trolling relationship forums because of the fact that they saw the, you know, the, the, the cuck joke and then or cuck statement on like Tinder on, on the Facebook page. And then it is actually shown you openly stating that, you know, it is a, it was a joke and you mess with people and you mess with these boards, which honestly do you i have no problem messing with boards and screwing with people but oh i mean it was a facebook group where like everyone kind of try to like outdo each other with like the crazy shit going on in their lives like someone would say something and then people would all it just became like this weird sick like obsession with like oh i did this crazy thing or i did this terrible thing and like people would get like you know riled up and crazy in comments and it was like drama basically like that's what the group is based on yeah and i i understand that it's just it's just the fact that that group came about and you were talking about how you like to mess with the group and and maybe you know that's what the group is for but like it becomes hard to buy into the whole clown situation and and don't yeah no i understand don't don't take anything i say here rough or anything it's just one of those situations oh, no, no, no. okay because... i know I, I think that it's it's understandable and i if i were you i would absolutely be like this sounds like bullshit like i especially nowadays when 
everyone wants to do something to, to be noticed or, or something. And if you act crazy, you're going to go viral, you know, that type of stuff. Like I was shocked when that video of me chasing Robin got any attention because to me, it was just like a few people who, who liked when I started clown posting in that group, like I started seriously getting into it. And again, like it did kind of start off like under the guise of like kind of a joke so that I'd like, could, it was easier to like accept, but there were people who were really supporting me and they were like, oh, you know, you, you do you and you go girl and stuff like that. And then I was like, oh, should I create like a page because people in the group were tired of my posting. And I was like, and I just want to be honest and like be myself. And then I did, and I had like maybe 50 people liked it. And I was like, oh, this is like cool to have a little audience. And then it just somehow blew up. And I have, you know, I, again, I'm terrible at keeping things up consistently. Like I couldn't do this if I wasn't just like, I'm genuinely just enjoying being a clown. Okay. So then you were saying that you got the the Robin video and then you, you posted it and you enjoyed and and saw that people enjoyed the post and that's kind of what made you stay in the mindset so or or keep you there so uh, and clown posting and it's like i mean in reality in reality how often in your day do you walk around in makeup how often in my day do i what it got cut off uh, sorry walk around in the makeup and stuff um Pretty much 24 seven. Uh, in the beginning, it was like I said in that interview, the night wave interview, I said that I put my makeup on the first thing I did in the morning before I took a shit. And that was true at the time. I really did feel like I needed to have the makeup on all the time. But I don't know, the more I've done this and I've done some videos where I'm not wearing makeup because it's not something that I feel like I need all the time. Um, so I don't wear it as often as I, I did in the past, but I still wear it when I go out, when I go to the grocery store, like I'm pretty sure I'm known as the crazy American clown lady. If you ask the woman who usually rings me up, she's definitely commented on it on Halloween. She was like, is this a costume or is this just like your every day? Like, cause it was around like September, late September, October when I started doing it. I was like, no, this is just me. So yeah, but I can't deny that there are days when I'm like, I do let society get to me and I'm like, you know, I don't feel like being stared at today. I don't feel like people looking at me like I'm an insane person. I just want to like not see anyone and I zip my hood up and I don't have makeup on. So it's not a 24 seven thing. No. Okay. Gotcha. So, so then it's not in, it, it's a persona. No, yeah. I wouldn't say that. Uh, I am a clown inside. I don't feel like I need the makeup to be a clown, but it's a form of self-expression. It's just any way that someone someone does their makeup where they put on foundation, they put on false eyelashes. I don't think that's a persona. It's how they enjoy expressing themselves. So for me, this is how I express myself. But I don't feel like I need to be, especially when I shave my head like this. That's when I really was like, I feel even more like a clown, you know, when I'm not wearing makeup because like this is clearly a clown haircut. But yeah, I don't, I don't feel like I, I need it. Uh, hey, aren't you stereotyping clowns by stating that this is a clown haircut? Come on. Come on. Don't do that to your people. I mean, I think I'm breaking a lot of stereotypes of being a female clown who does it. So not, I, not entirely. There are a lot of different types of clown hairstyles. So I don't know. I, I remember a guy I went to school with when I was in elementary, his mom was a clown and it's probably the only clown I could physically think of that wasn't some random famous clown. Are you trying to be the next like Bobo or one of the big clowns in the world? No, because I don't know how to, it's, it's my relationship with, and I try to explain it to people. It's like, it's so much deeper than just, an entertainer. Like, I do feel like I entertain people. I I know people find me like funny and they like my sense of humor and I use it to cope with, you know, things and I love to dance. And, you know, I feel like that's very traditional clown stuff, you know, entertaining people, but I don't feel like, I don't really care so much about that, you know, of, of being like famous or having some type of like, you know, like, oh, like I'm uh, such a great client. Like, cause I, I feel like I don't fit people's traditional idea of what, the, what a clown is in the first place because the way I do my makeup sometimes people are like what kind of clown makeup is that you know I don't fit any of like the rules I don't know how to juggle you know it's like 
I enjoy entertaining people, but I don't really necessarily know if I see that as like my job. Okay, so you don't know how to juggle. Can you make balloon animals? Someone in my audience I'm wanted me to ask that. So I'm in the process of learning. I'm having issues because I just cannot stand the sound balloons make when you, uh, it drives me insane. So that twist sound, I got to get past that, but I'm in the process. Gotcha. <laughs> so are you going to try to, I'm just finding myself. Are you going to try to juggle as well? Are you going to learn to juggle? Um, yeah, I want to, I've always, as a kid, I would always try. And I was like, how the hell do people do this? I don't understand how they do it, but I'm pretty, my hand-eye coordination is like awful in some ways, but it's pretty good. Like I'm really good at like, I can really catch when people throw things. Is this a black joke? No, no, no. Rhythm as in like consistent (laughs) rhythm. I mean, I know your feelings on the word. So it's, I don't need to dive into that or make a joke on it. It's okay. The see the rhythm joke, I would have laughed at, you know, we can leave the other thing, you know, but, um, no, I don't really think people say I don't have rhythm. I was always mocked because of that. So I don't, I don't think that's it, but I just feel like, I, I feel like I could get it, but maybe you're right. Maybe it is a rhythm thing. Then maybe I'm in trouble. I don't know. I thought it was more about like, you see what's happening and you're really good at like hand-eye coordination. But. So, so for everyone on screen, if you're watching this part, she is showing how to juggle, not juggling balls, human balls. Cause that looks really I mean, yeah, awkward. It looks really awkward. You, you're technically juggling balls either way. So. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Sorry. My roommate in the background is watching as well. And the it's juggling fine. balls got him. Um, so, okay. So for all, okay. You, you posted a video that you were a Trump supporter at one point. Are you, was that at that point, did you flip over to this because you think the the progressives and, and the left, or did your mind get warped by Sweden? Like what, what brought you to going after the alt-right and poll and stuff like that? Well, the Trump supporter thing was a joke. And I really thought people would get that it was a joke because I feel like my politics are so far from right that I just didn't think people would. It it was like a running joke between my friends. So when I put it in my video, which again, I didn't really think many people would see, I was like, this is so obviously a joke. And then people were mad at me. They were like, Trump supporter, I can't be a fan of you. You used to support Trump. Once a Trump supporter, always a Trump supporter. And I was like, oh. I guess I should have expected that. So, but no, I I was never a Trump supporter. Gotcha. So the, it was another goof. Um, and okay. So then here, let's, let's ask you a question about your country. Well, not your country. You're an American who lives in Sweden, but what is your thoughts? My country residence. Yes. What is your current thoughts on the immigration issues facing Sweden and all the high, high numbers of being a woman who lives in the country? Well, this might be a long answer, but I will try to keep it concise. So my feelings are that when you have an influx of people from a very different culture, which in Sweden, some people think it's taboo to say that. I have encountered um, online talking to a Swede where people were talking about the difference in culture between Middle Easterners and Swedes, and they thought they were implying it was racist to suggest that there's a culture clash. Obviously, I think that's absurd because that's natural. If an influx of Americans came to Sweden, there would be a culture clash. So I think that's to be expected. And I do believe that when it comes to how Sweden can counts rape, it is different. I mean, I know that that is a fact that there is a higher instance of rape in general, because the way that it is classified, it's more broad, like certain acts are deemed in Sweden that they, that wouldn't be like in America, for example, I'm not going to pretend that part of the influx isn't to do with people coming from the Middle East. I do think that Swedes have a very hard time in some instances in a, in a smaller scale example in a, in schools. Um, Robin and I talked about this in the past that there were some kids who were, whose parents were Middle Eastern and they would act out in school because in Middle Eastern culture, it's very common that 
when you are at home, your parents will, you know, smack you and tell you to get your shit together. Well, but once you go that, out, the that, teachers are allowed. That needs to be the case because, I mean, you look at the, and I, I don't know your age, but you look at people younger than me and this newer generation need a spanking once in a while. The whole I'm going to call CPS here in the States thing is getting out of hand. And that's why everyone's so fucking sensitive over here these days. No offense, but that's just, it's bad. It's well, getting bad. I, I personally don't agree. And I can get into that. That's a whole other thing. But but anyway, this is an example, again, that these kids are, are hit at home. But then when they go to school, their parents, because in, in the Middle East, your you know, teachers, anyone, any adult will, will discipline the kid if they're acting out outside of the house. But that's obviously not the case in Sweden. It's completely illegal to hit your kids. And I will say that Swedish children are extremely well behaved. Just saying. I was hit as a kid often. I got spanked a lot. My behavior was trash. So it varies. You know, I think it affects kids differently. It really depends. But anyway, so that's just an example that, you know, the culture is different. So I do think that, sure, like, they're might be issued you know like it's a very misogynistic culture like i think it's naive to not talk about that i don't think it's inherently like a race thing you know some people portray it that way like it very much has to do with the type of place that you're raised in and i think that there's obviously going to be issues like that so and but i do think it's blown out of proportion because people will act like oh women are just being raped in the streets in sweden and i'm like i feel much safer living here than i did in america Sweden is a safe society overall. Have there been incidents like that? Absolutely. And but I'm just saying, from my experience of living here, it is blown out of proportion. But is have you gone? Have you gone discussed? into the new? Have you gone into the no-go zones? Have you tried walking through the no-go zones as a woman? I don't know exactly what exactly what places are the no-go zones. I've been to an area that I. I don't know if that's considered one of them. It's considered like the ghetto, but I don't know if that's technically a no-go zone. As far as I know, that whole thing is blown out of proportion. Um, I have seen the videos of reporters going to those areas and, you know, people trying to get them to leave and everything, but well, and police know, going to them. But well, not only that, but police escorting them out for their own safety, advising them not to be there because of how bad it is. And that's Sweden. I, like that's yeah, one I mean, of the things you guys are facing over there. If you were to try, all I can say. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. I was just gonna say, if you walk through there, you would probably be pillaged. Come on, think about I it. I don't know. I, I. This is a good idea for for something that I can do. No, Maybe I'll film it or no, something. No, it's because not. That, we don't that, want. To, we don't want to see you die. Don't. Wa Come on. Okay. I. All I'm gonna say is I was born and raised in south central la it's not, not a great neighborhood my okay my yeah. block was good okay. but i walked home from school every day cool. and the technically but you're 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 hello you're not walking through a area where the cultural stance says it's okay if you're not dressed in a right specific way you're that's, that's, not, yeah, so I wanna, that's not how South Central is, though. Or I is. want to go. I'm just saying that I'm personally not afraid to go to this area. I will go. I, now I want to go, and I will see what happens because I'm curious. I'm not saying you're wrong. No, I don't. I have no I idea. Just, I've never been. I don't want to see But you. I want to know for my curiosity. But I'm curious, and I don't believe that I will be killed. Maybe somebody will throw a rock. Okay, Who you the want, hell knows? You wanna, but you, I personally don't feel like. You want to use the best example? You know who else thought they, nothing would happen? Were those backpackers who were fucking tortured and killed in the mountains because they thought the same thing. In it, the mountains? Where the hell was that? They were, they were literally saying, you know what? The Middle East isn't bad. We're going to go backpacking through there. And they were- They went to killed. the Middle East? Are you comparing? Well, <laughs> those is not the Middle East. But those sections of it are pretty damn close. Come on. Think about it. You okay. say- Right? I'm-, I'm I'm going to do this. I'm seriously going to do this because I'm curious. I'm so curious that there could be a place in Sweden because I've seen the videos where the reporters go and they're pissed and they're telling them to get the fuck out of the neighborhood. But I want to do this for myself because I've heard about the no-go zones. I've heard that it's a lot of proportion, but I, I haven't been as far as I know. I'm not entirely sure you know, what designated places they are, but like, I want to go. 
because I want to see what the hell is happening. And if that's true, that is bad. That's a problem. I'm not, I don't want to pretend that it's not happening just because it, it conflicts with my personal idea of what I want Sweden to be like. If it's bad, it's bad. That's just a fact. So I want to go and I want to see what the hell happens and I will report back. And if I don't, well, then you got your answer. Well, he, I don't want that answer. That's what you don't seem to. to no, no, to no. I, I know. I'm not saying that, but I, uh, I'm going to say I this right. That. I'm going to say this right here on YouTube and for the world. I do not condone you walking through a no go zone in Sweden in makeup in whatever you could be wrapped in a fucking trash bag. I do not condone it. I'm not suggesting it. And my whole audience thinks it's committing suicide. So if you're going to do it, <laughs> that's on you. But fucking A, I dude. mean, I have to do it. I have to do it now. I think me being in clown makeup might protect me, though. They might think I'm a demon or possessed or insane or a killer, all of the above, because most people think that. So, yeah, I, I, I will do some research. I'm not a complete idiot. I'm not going to read about it and hear like oh last weekend my friend was brutally assaulted i'm not gonna go after that you know i'm gonna do my research i'm gonna see what people are, have been saying about it i'm gonna look it up maybe i'll go to the least bad one according to what people say and i just i want to see what it's like because i want to get an unbiased account of what is actually happening and if it is as bad as people say that should be addressed because i do think there's a problem that when people come to sweden they tend to stay within, you know, their own communities and it's harder for them to, you know, branch out and, and meet new people and not get, you know, they, they get too used to speaking their own language. You know, like I'm guilty of that. I, I get sucked into speaking English when I know I should learn Swedish, but it's so easy, you know, it's easy to stick with your own people. And I feel like that is, some people say that that's, that's a bad thing to say that, oh, why is it that if they stay with their own community? But I feel like, you know, you should merge within community, the community and Sweden culture, again, is very, very different. And I think that, you know, you need to become immersed in it. And Sweden is so anti, you know, sexism and all of those things. It's secular. And then you have people who are Muslim and, you know, a lot of things are not very... Okay, we got we got some requests. If you're gonna do this, uh, which I oh, do God. not condone, people want you to wear a clown burka. Um, they want you to also. I don't know where I would get that? I mean, you would probably have to create it. Um, someone also wants you to yell "Deus Volt" while you're in the no go zone. That probably will no. get you killed and raped. Uh, also, I I gotta say this: Sweden's running into these issues because of the simple fact. That they expect a culture that will not integrate into their society to integrate. When you bring in, okay. when you bring in people who have fought in wars, at with, I don't know, ISIS and these other other branches, there's going to be good people and there's going to be bad people, and it's the bad people that give the good people a bad name. And when they're broadly running across this, it's going to happen. Okay. You know what I just realized? What's that? I just remembered. I'm pretty positive, but hold on. I was just thinking about it. That it sounded familiar. That a place that I have been to is considered a no-go zone. So I will go there since I've already been there and I can show you what it's like. And I haven't been deep, deep in there, but I've been and nothing's happened to me so i'm gonna double check and look at the list yes part of it is is there because i it's in the city i live in it's very close to where i live i've been there so i feel comfortable going there and i'm gonna try that out but i i see what you're saying about you know integration is very important i don't agree that that people are completely unwilling i think that there are some people who are there have been you know violent, awful incidents that have happened, that have been committed by the people who are, you know, come from the Middle East. I'm not, that's just, I can't say it hasn't happened. It has. And I think the important thing is to look at why is this happening? And I don't think it's as simple as like, that's just their culture, because that is what a lot of people say. I think it is deeper than that. I think that Swedish people can be too passive. That I always say, I think Americans can be too aggressive, in my opinion. And I think Swedes, Swedes are too passive. And I do think like that is a really bad culture clash to have because Middle Easterners are also aggressive. That's just, that's the culture and it's not a good combination. So I do feel like there, 
the way that Sweden has done things in the past, I don't agree with. There are certain things that I feel like they could be more hands-on, but I don't have the answer, but like, I don't think it's as simple as, you know, they just shouldn't come. You know, I feel like it's, it's deeper than that. And I think it, it depends. It varies, you know, on the person. There are a lot of people who have come from the Middle East and, you know, they've integrated fine. Um, my father-in-law is one of them, you know, I'm not on great terms with Robin, but he, he is a great man. I'm going to miss him being in the family. Uh, I hate thinking about that. Yeah. Some people are asking <laughs> no, about him, um, but I understand like that's, that's Dunzo. And, um, but Please don't go get yourself killed to prove a point. Others have done it. It's not worth no, it. What, I okay. would take precautions. Okay. I wouldn't go alone. You guys don't have guns, do you? No, the police do. But, I mean, hunting, you know, you can have a hunting license. You can have those types of guns, but no semi-automatics or anything like that. Or sidearms? Can you carry No, sidearm? like no one's carrying. No, okay, no, no, Can no, you no. carry pepper spray? Is that, are, are you guys allowed I to disagree. Carry? I disagree with the pepper spray ban or whatever. I don't. I don't. I don't they, agree with that. I think you what? should be allowed to carry pepper spray. No, you can't par- carry pepper spray in Sweden. No, as far as I know, I remember when I came here. I was like, "That's ridiculous." I don't understand that. I don't what really about, see why you're not allowed to have it. What about pocket knives? As far as I know, well, get I've never heard a anything very about nice, that. Get yourself a very nice pocket knife if you're going to try this. I have been wanting to. I have been wanting to get a very, you know, for for a while. So, yes, maybe I will before before I go. Safety first. I'm not a fool. I don't think that I'm impenetrable or, you know, invincible. So I will take precautions. But, again, I've been to this area and. Yeah, but maybe you were on the edge. Maybe you were on the edge of it. Maybe maybe the grooming gang was on the other side of town for the freaking night. You never know. It's the it's the same mindset as anything. You can walk I anywhere do and not, get huh? Go ahead. Yes, exactly. You really truly can. And I feel like but growing when, up in America, which is a very violent society, oh. I lasted, I was fine, so I just can't see that I my one time going okay. to no go zone, I'm gonna get killed. Okay. I'm gonna challenge you on that because you don't see gangs running around people here unless they're MS thirteen. You're not seeing that no. Come on. If if you can't acknowledge, I mean, so what we have? <laughs> I mean, we have gang violence. Yes, it, congratulations. You guys have refugee yeah. violence. Refugee violence. You guys chose to let these people into your society, right? You get that, right? That's the difference. These are Americans who are citizens who have some issues and are down on their luck and are doing things to get by. But you guys brought these, you guys imported problems. That's the issue that people see is you've imported problems. I think that in my opinion, I do believe that you should be willing to help out people who are in a shitty situation. Of course. Especially in terms of America, because America is responsible for a lot of the shit happening in the Middle East, especially how radical Islam has become. That what? is very America and the Soviet Union. What? Have you, have you, you know looked, this? Uh, I know that they've radicalized more, but you realize that they've been at war for thousands of years with Israel. I mean, Jews. you know about how the Middle East was in, uh, women were able to, to, to not cover themselves in Pakistan and, I believe Afghanistan and they were heading in a more, you know, progressive, so to speak, uh, direction. Women were able to, to hold certain jobs that they, they went way back in time because of the, the America was trying to intentionally radicalize is, uh, Muslims in the middle East in the seventies. Like that's uh, a well-known fact that, on. that is completely, are you saying that didn't happen? I'm saying that you can't blame America intervening. All, and all this stuff on America. You know, there's one I other mean, big group there that has caused a lot of this, even more than the U.S., right? And the reason why the U.S. gets involved in the Middle East so much, right? There's one individual state there that has great walls, <laughs> and they have an iron I mean, dome. I mean, I'm just talking about, I'm just saying that this particular specific thing that I'm talking about, it is true yeah, that no, the Middle I, East was becoming more, that's why Pakistan, there are parts of Pakistan 
Egyptian that are very progressive and there are parts that are like in the stone age and it has to do with this. I mean, I don't remember all the details, but like there's tons and tons of things you can read about this and yes, like, this happened but... and this is a huge reason why Muslims are so have become became everything what basically backwards all the progress that they had made was basically just completely gone down the drain. And I and I am acknowledge that, but I'm also asking you, you understand why the US intervenes in the Middle East so much, correct? It's not only self interest, it's the interest of one body with an iron dome and a massive wall that we funded and took care of. There's one country that brings us into almost everything over there since the 70s. They're our greatest ally. I feel like, I feel like it's more about money than anything. No. See, you tell me to do research into <sighs> radicalization of Muslims. You do some research into U.S. conflict in the Middle East and who we've been there to protect. Fair? If you expect me to look into a group of people whose book literally talks or, or a segment of their book talks about radicalization and killing infidels and everything else. You look into what I'm saying. Yeah. Fair. Sure. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I, will, I will read whatever you, you know, you, I will read whatever and you will have to read my information. That's fine. You could toss it to me in an email. Um, we are coming up to an hour. What, it's not, it's not, like it's called actually looking into things because I'm not anti-Semitic, but Storm Bless One, you keep talking out your ass. You're very good at that. Um, but yeah, so anything you want to say to the people, anything you want to pitch, uh, I'll drop your link for your channel. Um, well, yes, my channel on YouTube is Little Lunchbox, but I did want to say that I'm considering, I'm thinking about, because this conversation, I think, you know, is part of the reason why I, I want to do this, that I kind of want to, people have been telling me for a while that I should make a podcast, but I was like, I have no idea, you know, what the hell to talk about. But recently I was like, you know, everything with the Clefe situation and, and the way that James Wood spoke to me that I did think was, you know, pretty decent, the way that he came, you know, he wasn't so, he wasn't rude or aggressive or anything like that. And I was like, I kind of want to do a podcast where I interview people that it can be, you know, from any part of the political spectrum, but specifically, I want to talk to people who are, you know, have politics that are different than mine, specifically right wing, and just interview them. Like, I want to know things about their life. I want to know, yeah. you know, what led to their political beliefs and almost kind of like, you know, bridging the clavide, I was thinking about calling it, because I do feel like there's a lot of division right now. And I do feel like both sides are very reactionary and no one, there isn't really any progress being made because no one actually wants to have the conversation. You know, it's always yelling and screaming, you're racist or, you know, or you're a degenerate. You know, I just feel like there should be a discussion. So I, I kind of want to start something like that. Gotcha. I, I think I I kind of do that over here as well, where I'll bring on people on both sides of the aisle and just talk. And you never know who who knows. It may end up working out well. I do want to say thank you for jumping on. I know you just randomly popped into my chat yesterday, but I do appreciate you taking time out of your data. Oh, yeah, no problem. And also, I just want to say if anyone is interested in potentially, you know, being a guest on that, if they could email me at lunchboxofficial at gmail.com. Um, oh, um, someone before you leave, they want you to check out Tim Pool's video on Sweden's no go zones. He did a big expose on it while he was over there. Um, I might have seen that, but I'm gonna I'll look it up later. And, but I am going to do it, I'm going to venture there because, again, I've been there already, I'm I survived. But I do feel like it's blown out of proportion. Well, I wish you the best of luck with that. I do not condone it. I do not want to see you die. It's my note. Thank you for coming on Lunchbox. Uh, I'll, I'll send you no some. Problem. I'll send you an email, and we'll we'll talk about those links I want to send you. So. All right. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. And yes. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Uh... Dude, she's going to die. She's going to die over there, guys. It's the same situation with those people who think they can go anywhere in the world without taking 
Storm, check out um, some of my older stuff. I've interviewed a lot of people on this channel. I just haven't been able to recently because of my uh, Twitter getting roasted. I had a lot of – it won't be funny. I don't want to see anyone die. It'll just be – it'll be sad. Yeah, I did fail to keep her from that. I did attempt. I made all seriousness and attempts at it. I hope she does not do it. 